Well, one of the things that really bothered me was, as I said, they admit that Bitcoin miners are helping grid flexibility and grid stabilization, but they immediately write it off by saying, well, Bitcoin miners are causing this extra demand. But what they don't understand is having demand for power is good, right? We, that means there's an economic subsidy to build new power. We know that Bitcoin miners are causing the construction of new power. They are helping with the economics of renewables, such that renewables that might not be economical now are economical, right? So that's causing there to be more renewable power in existence than otherwise. We know there's Bitcoin miners that have their specific mandate, which is to um, induce the construction of new renewables, specifically Aspen Creek. I'm an investor, but um, this is their specific model. They only operate if they can add power to the grid, clean power. So this is a Bitcoin miner that's specifically causing new power to be added to the grid. So the US government is operating under this zero-sum assumption where there's no new supply contributed by Bitcoin. But that's a false assumption. The existence of Bitcoin is this buyer of all these pockets of energy that might be stranded, or buyers of wind and solar energy that's not being monetized. That means there's more energy overall. So they're causing more supply to come into existence. They don't acknowledge that. That's a huge oversight in my mind. The other thing that really bothered me was they have this can't win approach, basically. So they say, well, you know, it doesn't matter that Bitcoin miners are using renewables because all that means is that other users of renewables, now they're just pushed out of that power and they're just going to use coal or natural gas. So they call that leakage, which is a horrible term. Um, and so basically they're dismissing the fact that Bitcoin miners are making a concerted effort to locate with next to renewables and use those renewables because they're basically saying, well, in our kind of zero-sum scarcity mindset world, uh, there's only a fixed amount of renewables, so it doesn't matter that you're consuming renewables. Um, and so they basically lay out an extremely narrow set of conditions under which Bitcoin miners could sort of like validly consume energy, which is just not, it's like a crazy impossible standard to meet. And it's not a standard that I see any other industry being subjected to. So, um, you know, the US government doesn't like go to, you know, some manufacturing industry and say, hey guys, you have to use renewables, but you have to be additive with renewables and you need to make sure that you're not um, using up scarce renewable power that someone else might be using. It's like, that doesn't happen. So they're just laying out this crazy impossible standard, which is why I say it's a can't win approach. Because even when miners are doing everything they can to be as clean and as sustainable as possible, the US government doesn't give them any credit for that. And so that was, to me, the most irritating part of the report. What in terms of the recommendations did they make? And is any part of that, did you think, okay, that's productive or is it all complete junk? Well, it, kind of vague. So one thing they said was they wanted more transparency from miners, which I completely agree with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've been sort of involved in the Bitcoin Mining Council. By the way, they didn't cite it at all, which is... Fine, I guess. I mean, if you don't, if you think it's an industry group, so you don't believe the data, but they're citing, um, you know, uh, anti industry groups. Yeah, they're, they're exactly. They're citing like anti proof of work lobbyists. Like we didn't touch on it, but there's these academics that have this uh, crypto carbon rating uh, institute and they are funded by proof of stake protocols to create ESG reports for these proof of stake protocols. So obviously they have an anti proof of work bias. So the US government is citing them. They're not citing any pro-Bitcoin industry groups, so it's completely unbalanced. 